Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Eric the old jarhead here. I've had a thought that's been kicking around in my head for a while because of what I see on social media. Now first, I gotta tell you, I'm loving the weather out here right now. It's absolutely fantastic. It's like 70 degrees, perfect weather. We're burning slash, my mill's running fine. All is well in the world. But I've had this thought that keeps banging around in my head that I wanted to bring up to you. And part of it perhaps is because I've joined several groups on social media about solar power, do-it-yourself solar power and off-grid solar power. And one of the things that I constantly see is either I've got these solar panels, now what do I need? Or I've got this size of an RV, house, cabin, whatever, how much solar do I need? Well, folks, if you're looking at solar panels first, you're doing it wrong. I've been thinking about this a lot lately, and I've been thinking about how to present to you the right approach to figure out how to build your own off-grid system or your own off-grid power system. How to do that? What is the approach? Well, folks, don't think about solar panels until later because those are nothing more than a charger. That's all they are. They're like, a, they're like a, you know, you got a phone, you plug in your wall wart and you charge your phone. That's like your solar panels when it comes to an off-grid system. They're not the foundation or the base of your solar power system. So what is, right? You're thinking, well then what is? It's called solar power, right? Why isn't solar panels the, the foundation of the system? <laughs> well, guess what? The batteries are. In fact, I would venture to say that you probably shouldn't call it a solar powered system. You probably should call it a battery based system or something like that because you're not going to run off the sun very much. You're only gonna run off the sun when the sun is shining. If the sun ain't shining, you ain't running. And the only way you're running off the sun when the sun is shining is if your batteries are fully charged, really. And you have enough power coming in to charge those batteries that you can shed some extra power to run all the stuff that you need to run. Otherwise, you're still running off your batteries. So how do you size your system? The only thing that matters is what I'm gonna tell you now. You've got to figure out how much power you use every day. Now, if you're building a cabin like we did, we started this cabin back in 2009. And, you know, back then we, we didn't have a cabin. We had to build one. So we didn't know what our power was gonna be, right? However, we could get an idea of what it would need the way I'm gonna tell you now, which is you've got to go through every single electronic thing that you're going to run in your cabin on a daily basis and find out how many watts it takes to run that item. So if you're gonna run a microwave, put that down. Is it a 750 watt microwave or a 1500 watt microwave? You put that down and you decide how many hours per day you're gonna run that. Now I realize a microwave, it might be one tenth of an hour per day, but you put that down. But you figure out every single thing you're gonna run at 120 volts, because here in America, that's what we use, 120. Then if you're gonna run stuff at 12 volts, which is common, like a car stereo or something like that that's easy to run off a battery bank, you put those down as well. If you're gonna run a well pump or whatever, you put that down. When you've got all of those things down, you calculate how many watts each of those are, how many hours per day you're going to run them, and add all that up, and that will give you your watt hours or kilowatt hours per day of power that you need in order to do what you wanna do in your cabin. Once you add all that up, you then convert that to amp hours. And the reason you convert it, folks, is because the vast majority of batteries today are listed in amp hours. And there are some advantages there. One of them is how many amps that battery can provide or how many amps that battery can take in charge at the same time. So you need to figure out how big of a battery bank you need to run all of those electronics for however many hours per day you think you're gonna run them and then how many days you want to run those items if the sun's not shining, right? So heavy rain clouds, snow, all that kind of stuff, block the sun, you don't get hardly any charging power or maybe none at all, and you need to figure that out. And the rule of thumb is three to five days. Now, the way I've done it is three to five days and have a generator to back me up if it goes longer, like 40 days, because out here in December and January, I don't get a whole lot of solar charging, no matter what I do. It just doesn't happen. So you gotta have a generator. 
but everything is based on those batteries. Once you figure out how much battery power you need to run your cabin, your house, your RV, your mansion, whatever, for three to five days, you build that battery bank, and then you take that battery bank and figure out how many solar panels of whatever variety you want to get it would take to charge those batteries back up from basically empty in four or five hours or however many hours you expect to get of sunshine where you're located. Here, the average is I think five hours, but the truth of the matter is in the, in the winter, it's about two if you're lucky. So in the summer, <laughs> I can get six or seven or eight hours of solar charging easily plenty of sunlight here right because it's gonna come up at four or five o'clock in the morning and go down at 10 o'clock at night in the middle of summer here but in the winter it's not gonna come up over the trees till after 10 a.m. and it'll be down below the trees usually by two or three in the afternoon and you might think well hey, Eric, that's five five hours or four hours well not really because it's too low on the horizon still it's, it's never gonna get this high up in the sky during the winter. So I might get two hours if I'm lucky. I see lots of times in the winter, I get no absorption. I get a little bit of bulk charge and that's it. Or maybe I get absorption and no float charge. And that's just how a, a charge controller works. It doesn't just take the power from the solar panels and just jam it into the batteries, they ramp. You get lots of voltage, lower amps, a little bit lower voltage, higher amps, and then lower voltage, lower amps once the batteries are fully charged. We call that float charging. So you build your battery bank. Then you start looking at solar panels to figure out how much solar you need to charge those batteries back up after you've used them. And if you know that you use so many amp hours or watt hours per day, then you could figure out really how much solar you need to put that back in. But you always overbuild your system because that's the way it goes. You need to, right? So I hope that helps somebody out because the reality is don't look at solar panels. Don't look at the size of your house or your RV or your cabin. Look at the electronics you expect to run. You're gonna run Starlink? You're gonna run a, a, you know, a, a satellite TV? Are you gonna run a TV? Are you gonna run a refrigerator? Are you gonna run a freezer? All the washer, dryer, whatever it is you wanna run. And I gotta tell you, for our house in the, in the big city, I'd need like a hundred solar panels and a hundred batteries to provide power for that house. And even though there's only two of us, we seem to use a lot of power. So it would be pretty expensive for me to provide power there. But out here, we really just use lights and a refrigerator and stereo for music and not much else. But again, all of that, totally based on what I use and how much battery power I need. So it's really a battery power system, not a solar power system. Solar is just a means of charging it. And I've got to tell you, you could do that with hydro, micro hydro, with wind. There's lots of ways that you could charge those batteries up. So is it really a solar power system? No, I'd say it's an off-grid power system. And there's lots of ways to charge those batteries up. So folks, I hope that helps somebody out. If it did, hey, give me a thumbs up in this video. Meanwhile, I'll drop another video right here for you to check out. Appreciate your watching, folks. Y'all have a great day. The old jar head out.